Hey guys, how you doing? Gonna do kind of a long video today because it's my hundredth video I'm putting on YouTube, so I'm gonna try to make it a special one. I'm gonna do an update on pretty much my entire collection of um, exotic animals and pets that I have. So this is of course my female uh, Grandma Stella Polka. It's my first tarantula that I ever got. I've said that numerous times on the videos. She's also my favorite tarantula because she's pretty much what got me started into the hobby of exotic animals. I don't know if she's going to eat or not. She's pretty full. She might. She also might just be more interested in what it is. <laughs> nope, didn't think so. So, let's move on to the next one. Hope you guys enjoy the video. And here's a female Grandma Stella Polka Ripes Choco Golden Knee. Don't think she's going to eat either because she's pretty full, as you can see there. Really cool spider. Real nice, just not real, not real skittish or anything like that. I mean, just kind of one of those, uh, why are you touching me kind of spiders. <laughs> so, yeah, cool tea. Let's check out another one. And here's a beautiful tea as always. Another one of my favorite but least favorite terrestrials. Favorite because the colors are awesome. Least favorite because she will kick hairs at you if you just look at her wrong. Let's see if she'll eat. Looks like she's interested in it. Leave it in there, we'll go on to the next one. And here we have my male Honduras curly hair. And let's see if he'll eat. Sweet. Ah, uh, camera wasn't facing him. There we go. He's due for a cage upgrade um, here relatively soon. Probably really soon, actually. But yep, let's move on to the next one. Come with fluffy hairs. <laughs> Here's one I haven't showed very often, but a lot of people have been asking to see it. This is my uh, Cyclosternum fasciatum Costa Rica tiger rump. Had this thing ever since it was a quarter of an inch, and it has grown up kind of slow, kind of quick. Um, turned out to be a female. Pretty sweet. It's those pinks and blacks. It's so awesome. A little piece of flowing uh, web is throwing off the uh, focus on the camera. Pretty cool though. Uh, let's look at another one. I don't know if that one will eat. Let me see. Nice. A little small cricket. Badass. <laughs> Alright, let's go to the next one. And that's about as good a shot of any as I'm going to get on my Usambara baboon, my uh, Ternoculus murinus. Really sweet, really mean tea. Yep, that's what I thought, but I'm gonna get. <laughs> Check out another one now. It's my Lazidora parahibana female from my last video. She's hardened up, gotten pretty cool colors on her now. And I know this girl needs some food now since she just molted. Let's check it out. Nice. Pretty sweet. She should be able to take a second one. again and let's move on. Here's my mean little rose hair. <laughs> let's get her some food. Let's see if she'll eat. <laughs> that worm's playing dead. Huh. 
Maybe it is dying. That's weird. All right, well, she don't look very hungry. She's pretty pissed off, so. Look at that threat posture. <laughs> Funny little girl. I wish she would just calm down a little bit. There we go. There's a good shot of her. But mean as always. She's been mean ever since I've had her. Well, let's move on. And of course, overall, very popular tea. Brachypelma smithy, Mexican red knee. And I don't know if she will eat, so let us see. Probably not. No, nope, I didn't think so. She's a nice girl though. Good look at her. Alright, let's move on. Might actually be able to show you her today. This is my Salma Post Armenia Venezuelan Sun Tiger. She just made about 20 laps around this enclosure, so I'm gonna try to open it really carefully. Try to pick the camera up and show you. The last time I did this, she got out, it was terrible. There she is. Really pretty girl. Love showing her off if she ever behaves. In her last molt, she actually got her foot stuck because she um, molted in a really awkward position. Now she's got like a crook on the end of her foot, so it's not real bad though. She'll grow out of it, no problem. All right, let's move on. Whew, success. And inside of this enclosure is my big female king baboon. I'm actually going to take our hide log off and show you um, what she looks like on because I need to check on her anyways. I haven't seen her in a real long time. I just want to make sure she's healthy, so I'll be right back and let's show you. Well, finally got her to come out without doing much damage to her home. Not really at all. I just got to put a, a log back up here, but typical King Baboon. Check this out. She was not happy. You hear her hissing? <laughs> she's, okay. Well, it's good to see her. Good to see she's happy and healthy. And I mean happy, like not happy. <laughs> yeah, I let her go back in. I don't mess with her too much. <laughs> Sweet. All right, let's go take a look at another one. All right, this next thing I'm gonna show you. I got an interesting story to tell you. This is a Haplopelma albostriatum. Yeah, this is a Thai zebra. Pretty mean tarantula. Pretty quick and pretty aggressive. Okay, you see that she's in a relatively clean new enclosure because I had her in that enclosure. Um, and this is what I want to show you. That's why you want to be aware, kids, of even small spiders. Had her in this with a pretty strong mesh top. And look at this. Chewed right through it. And I had this spider loose in my house for five days. Almost chalked it up to sure it was dead, but because it's a like a tropical species, it requires good humidity, good warmth, and my house is pretty cold this time of year. So I accidentally found her walking up my main stairwell, tucked in the corner. So pretty lucky for me and for the tea. Uh, she was pretty thin and dehydrated. Obviously, I got her pretty much a swimming pool right there in comparison. So. She's back in good health, and I'm really happy now because I really like this girl a lot. Uh, it was pretty sad, and needless to say, you never want to have a spider running around your house, let alone a tarantula. Yep, on to the next one. Next, we have my Ponopelma species, a Ponopelma species, Flagstaff Orange. She always walks around with her butt up in the air like that. I haven't shown her in many videos because She's been molting a lot and she always seems to be in pre-molt and never wants to eat. And of course she pooped in her water dish, gotta clean that out. Pretty cool looking tea, real nice, not real skittish. Watch her jump away when I touch her now. Yeah, she's kinda of another one of those like, eh, why are you touching me? I'm just gonna move away slowly. <laughs> yeah, there she is right there. Real nice, real fluffy, real soft tea. Alright, let's go to the next one. This tea is my adult female green bottle. She um, is fresh out of a molt. She just molted um, 
about, oh, sorry about the noise. She molted about uh, four days ago. And I was able to watch most of it. I got a pretty cool, I got her whole shed. Came out like intact and perfect. Right there, you can obviously see a little white lip inside of there. Definitely a female, sweet molt. Well, let us move on. I'm gonna run through these real quick, cause more of the same. I have three more green models. We have a male, another male, and we have a female, right there. Um, the two males, kind of cool because hopefully I'll be able to use those two to pair with her and with the last big green model that I showed you and make some more green bottle babies because they're one of my favorites. Alright, let's check out more. And here we have my Brachypalma albiceps. A female. She'll be molting soon. She is wild. One of my favorite terrestrial species. Um, I know they all are amongst my favorite but you can check out that skin tone, head color and Right after a molt, you can really see that they have like really red abdomen hairs, velvety black legs. Sweet female, very nice too, I recommend as a pet. Here we have Pamphobetes platyama. Um, she looks like she might be going to be a pre-molt. Um, I say she because I didn't get a good look at her last molt, but thought I saw that it was female and this will be an easier molt to check because you can see she's just not losing her Christmas tree colors on this past molt and yeah you can only see the starburst pattern on the head right there it's pretty cool should come in next molt pretty well again Pampabetes platyama yeah I need to give her some water all right let's move on and here's my big female Pulcotheria regalis and an ornamental it's that enclosure that I made for her. She loves it, plenty big for her. But the best shot I can get of her, she never comes out from behind this log. You can kind of see. Alright, let's get another one. And this is also about the best look I'm going to get at my uh, second biggest P. regalis. Hey, that was quick. <laughs> She is always elusive. Yeah, if you pause the video, you can get a good shot of her. <laughs> Check out more. And this is going to be my mature male, Vicularia Vicularia. He just had his mature molt. Um, kind of hard to see him, isn't it? He just had his mature molt last week. Um, I think I'm going to be selling him because I don't need another mature male of these. So if anybody wants one, just shoot me a message on here. Um, I can ship with insulator box and styrofoam and a heat pack. Alright, let's move on. And I don't get this girl on video much because she's usually in her elaborate burrow. I'm going to try to coax her out a little bit so y'all can see her. She's my biggest avic that I have. I don't want to be too rough with her because she's really fast. And kind of aggressive. But this is an Avicularia urticans. Let's see if I can get her to go up the glass. Wow, she's way bigger than I thought she was. She's molted a few times and just then just like never come out of her hide. So I can get a look at her. But I'll spend a little more time getting her on video if I can get her to come out. It's really hard to see the purples on her. She might stop and try to get a picture too because she's never out like this. But yeah, hope you guys enjoyed her. I'm gonna stop and get a picture of her while I got her out like that. I'll be right back.
All right, and here we have my female Choco Goldeny. Another big one. This is Tank Girl. She is big girl. Um, my biggest Choco that I have. For size comparison. It's my iPhone next to her. So yeah. That case, top to bottom, is like five inches or so, so when she sprawled out, she's pretty big. And I don't know if she will eat, but we'll try. <laughs> Think she's gonna go for it. Nice. She's a big girl. Yeah, all right, let's move on. And here we have another under and curly hair, Brachypoma albopolosum. This is another male. He's a cool guy. Whoa, bad camera. Walking around trying to figure out what's up. <laughs> all right, let's check out another one. And here we have another Lasiodora parahabana. This is a male, and he is going to be molting soon. Pretty cool. Move on. And here we have a slightly bigger male, Lazidor Paravana. He is mean. He kicked hairs at me. But um, yeah, I struck out on these LPs. I got like four males and one female, but whatever. It's still. Pretty sweet tea, and he'll get pretty big still. All right, let's move on. And here we have a pink zebra beauty female. Really nice, really sweet looking tea. This one's due for a molt real soon, so it doesn't really show the colors, but all those hairs on the end of its legs are really pink after a molt. And, um, really, really good beginner species. So a lot of you guys, like a lot of you guys, send me messages on on YouTube saying what's a good beginner tarantula and this is definitely probably in the top two that I'd recommend is a pink zebra beauty common terms I think it's Dallas Capistratus I think it's the uh, scientific term but yeah really awesome tea get one if you want a pet and here's my resident psychopath it's my Nehandrochromatis female taking a drink Thought that was pretty cool to get on film. More or less, I like, taking her bath. I give her a huge water dish so she can do whatever she wants. But yeah, she's just she molted actually about a month ago, a month and a half ago. So she's colored up real nice. She's getting real big, and she's still real crazy. This was more than a month ago. I got her on video. However long that last like four or five videos ago, if y'all want to go look at it. But yeah. I just cannot get over those red hairs on the abdomen. This white and black contrast is just ridiculous on her. Oh god, please don't jump out and bite my face off. She's like, excuse me, why are you disturbing my drink? <laughs> well, at least she stopped to give us a pose. Oops. Alright, let's move on. She's one of my favorites too, so I want to give her a little more airtime. Okay, moving on. And here are my Vicularia Versicolor babies. I'm gonna try to feed them. And kind of hard to see any kind of color on the video, but these are my Vicular version color babies. And time for them to eat. Sweet.
Might be able to see a little bit of color on that one. Nope, kind of blurry. There we go. But yeah, three avicularia, or four avicularia brush color babies. Let's move on. And here we have some of my avicularia diversities. Should be able to show you. Pretty cool, some of it's coloring there. It's got pink stripe, green, gold. Got three of them here. Whoa, the camera sucks. A tripod at least, I mean. But yeah, got three of them. I'm not gonna feed them because they all appear to be about to shed. So I'm actually gonna put some water in there. And yeah, Vicular Diverse Bees. He is trying to come out, it looks like. <laughs> Let's move on. Alright, I'm not going to really open these up because they're all hiding, but right there I have a Pocotera Rufalata sling. We have a, oh look at that, well, that one's out, never is out. It's a Pocotera Barra or Subfusca Lowland. Then we have three Pocotera Subfusca or Subfusca Highlands. Can't wait to get those guys big. These are pretty important. Five tarantulas to me right here. And we're back. And pretty impossible to see right here, but. All right, there's a Pocotheria Metallica. I was able to sex her underneath a microscope at that small age. She's about an uh, inch and a half, two inches now. And I was able to get some pictures and throw it up online and get some confirmation that I may have a female, so. Hopefully it proves out and I will have more videos. She's in pre molt soon, so she should be molting and we'll take a look at her then. But yeah, it's Pocla. Pocla Daria Metallica. Can't wait to get her large. Alright, looks like I'm going to finish the video off for my spiders right here. Here I have another uh, Usambara baboon. Um, it is hiding, so you cannot see it. It's in its web, but it's a little male. There we have a green bottle blue sling. There we go. We have another green bottle blue sling. And a third green bottle blue sling. Pretty cool. Back here. <laughs> Say hello again. Back here I have a Very small Lazidora Parabona sling. Probably looks about the same as the size as one of my friends has. Hope you like her. <laughs> Alright guys, that's my tease. I didn't count how many it was, but that was all of them. For the first time I've showed you all my spiders in one video. Hope you liked them all. And uh, let's move on to some snakes now. Alright guys. Start here, I have my bumblebee male ball python. Really awesome guy. He's almost up to breeding size for me. He's about 500 grams almost right now, like 490 some grams. There he is. He is amazing. All right, let's go take a look at another one. And we got my little piebald male. Not really the best time to show him because he is in heavy shed right now. He should be shedding in the next um, few days. But yeah, he still looks good on the camera. But I'm going to do an update on him when he's done because for a regular piebald, he, as he's getting bigger, he's probably about close to, he's like 200 some grams right now, a little over 200 grams. He's not losing any of his really sweet pastel colors and so. I want to get everyone's opinion on him, but yeah, that's him, and I will show you again after he sheds. Here's my female dinker. I say that because she's just dinkerish. You know, she's got really interesting patterns and stripes on her, and really light shades of orange. All this stuff, so it's pretty wild patterns too on her. I mean, look at all those. But yeah, just a little fun little project. I'm going to grow her up and breed her. 
Right. <laughs> Let's take a look at another one. And here we have my pastel 100% hep pied female. She's going to be going with that other guy once she gets some more size on her. She's going up pretty nice. She's about 220 grams right now. Um, I really just like how dark, how solid the blacks are on her. And she's got some nice blushing and some just look at that jet black. I like that a lot on the pastels. She's got some pretty good blushing, like I said, on her, but. So I'll get you to look at her tail. Yep. Pretty sweet. She came from a um a clutch of a yellow belly pied to a pastel het pied. So I believe that's what it was. I really like her a lot, so I really can't wait for her to get up. She's got a nice attitude too and a crazy feeding response, which is awesome for a female. All right, let's keep going. Appreciate y'all sticking with me through all this. And right here we have my pretty big female, Super Pastel. She, I weighed her yesterday. She was 1,097 grams, which is kind of cool. She'll definitely be ready to go this next season for me. I'm going to put her with the Bumblebee. thought that would be pretty cool. Yeah. She's a real, real nice girl. Like the really like pale yellows and crazy blushing on her, almost to the point where it's like white. So she's a real nice girl. Really good feeding response too. She's like I said, 1,100 grams basically, and she will pound anything I put in front of her. So yeah, I like her a lot. Oops. <laughs> Whoops! Hit the light. All right, so let's move on to the next one. All right, next up we have my female pinstripe. Got her from Sean Bradley over at Exotics by Nature. Um, she's really nice. I like her a lot. Um, I got her with the intent of breeding her to my my bumblebee as well. I really want a chance to make some some spinner blast if possible. I know that's a that's a long shot with them, but that's what I'm looking at making. Um, some spinners too. I think would be pretty cool. Um, so yeah, I'm hoping that she will, she's actually off feeder now, she's stopped eating for the last few weeks and it's kind of annoying, she's right around 950 grams, right around that mark where they stop eating, huh? But, um, I want her to get up to size two so I can breed her also to the bumblebee, like I said, next season and try to make some cool combos. But she's a real nice, real nice ball python, really, she's always very active when I get her out. Um... But I don't know what it is. She's just gone off feed. You know how they do. But um, she's pretty cool. All right. Let's take a look at the last one. All right. My last ball python I have is this beautiful girl. This is my pastel yellow belly female. <laughs> Say hello. She's really sweet. She's also been giving me a hard time feeding. She ate really good when I first got her, and uh, really well when I first got her, and then she's kind of just gone off. She is um, 480 grams, so she's still a pretty big girl. I mean, it's kind of nice, but um, it's frustrating because I wanted to power feed her and try to get her up so she could also go the same season as my the pinstripe and the super pastel. But if she doesn't pick up feeding, I don't know if that's going to work. But um. I have pretty cool plans for her. I don't know. I'm either gonna do one or two things. I mean, I either want to pick up a um, a specter for her, so I could potentially make super stripes, pastel specters, pastel super stripes. But if I can't find one, which it's proven to be very difficult, I might just breed her with my piebald next semester. Next semester, geez, sorry, a lot of school in the mind. But um, next season, because I think pastel, yellow belly, hep pieds would be kind of cool in the future. But um, yeah. Pastel, yellow belly female. That's it for my ball pythons. Let me show you one more animal and we're going to finish up this video. <laughs> Alright. Here's the last little guy there. 
That's just one of my little bearded dragons that I have. She's always grumpy, always wanting food. But yeah, appreciate you guys sticking with me, watching this long video. Um, I really do appreciate all the support and feedback y'all have given me on uh, YouTube. And I will continue making these videos for your enjoyment and for you guys to watch. Y'all have a good one. I really appreciate you watching this whole video with me. Bye.